Hello AV20 pilots! Today we're going to walk through updating your AV20 unit. Whether you're using the AV20S or the AV20E. Before we start, let's take a quick look at the AV20 in action. Here's our experimental Cessna 182 in flight. And on the right side of your screen, you'll see the AV20 display will be updating. First, let's go over what you'll need for the update. Make sure you have your AV20 unit. You'll also need an RS232DB9 update harness, such as the Cost Arrow AV20 updating cable and a USB to RS232DB9 serial 9-pin adapter, like the Sabrent SBT USC 6K. We will show you how to build an RS232DB9 harness in this video if you want to build your own. Finally, make sure your computer has the latest AV20 updater software installed which can either be found on our website under AV20 support or in the description of this video. Before we move on to the actual update process, take a moment to make sure you have all your materials ready and your workspace set up. Lastly, make sure to set aside some time for this, as the update process can take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, depending on your internet connection, and if you have your update harness ready. If you have an AV20S or you do not have the Tail Beacon X enabled, then you can skip this step entirely. Now that you're set up, the first step before performing the update is to disable the transponder control page on the AV20. Using the right button, scroll through the pages until you reach the transponder control page. Notice that this page is currently enabled. Continue pressing the right button until you reach the last page, the Setup menu. To enter the menu, Press both the bottom left and the right buttons at the same time. Once inside, press the bottom left button once to move to Page Enable. Press the right button to select. Now press the bottom left button twice until you reach Transponder Control. Press the right button once to disable the page. To exit, press both the bottom left and the right buttons twice. This will close the Page Enable screen and return you to the normal display. If you're using the Sabrent USB to RS-232 adapter, you'll need to make sure you download the Windows driver for it from their website. The link will be in the description. Go to the product page, click the Downloads tab, and then click the blue Download button under Prolific Driver for Windows, located at the bottom right of the page. Once the driver is downloaded, we can continue with installation. Now we will go over how to install the prolific drivers to make sure your Sabrent RS-232 to USB cable works correctly. First, locate where your file was downloaded to. This is usually the download folder of your computer's main drive, but you can also check your web browser settings to see where it's saved to. Once you have located the folder named Prolific Drivers Windows Drivers, double-click the file. For demonstration purposes, I've moved mine to my desktop but you don't have to unless you want to. You should now see a folder called Windows. Double-click that folder to open it, and two more folders will appear. You can open either one, as they contain the same installation executable, but as you will see here, one of them has an extra folder you will have to open. Once you see something like this, you will want to double-click the file that contains logo driver setup. You will likely get a pop-up that says, this application may depend on other compressed files in this folder. Click Run to proceed with the setup. You should now get a Windows pop-up that asks if you want to allow the app to make changes to your device. Click Yes. The installer will now come up. Click Next to continue, then Finish after the installation is done. Your drivers are now properly installed, and you can continue to the next step of updating your AV20. Let's go over how to install and run the AV Update tool. First, open a web browser and navigate to the UAvionics Support Center. A link will be in the description of this video. Once you're there, click the Select a Product drop-down and select either the AV20E or the AV20S, depending on which one you have. Next, scroll down until you find Service Bulletins. 
you will see a service bulletin for the 1.8.0 software upgrade for your device. Click the box with an arrow in the bottom right of this bulletin to view it. On this page, you will see multiple red links, one of which is the software update file, another which is a PDF with detailed instructions on how to complete this update, and lastly, the AV Update tool. This tool works on both the AV20 and the AV30, so don't worry about the name saying AV30 in it. Now is a good time to download both the software update file and the update tool if you haven't already. After downloading the update tool, locate where it was downloaded to on your computer or open it straight from your browser like you see here. I'm using Google Chrome for this example, but many browsers have this feature. When you get the Windows prompt to make changes to your device, click Yes. The update tool should now open on your computer as you see here. Let's go over how everything should be wired to ensure a proper connection between your AV20 and your computer. Here, you can see our AV20E connected to a Sabrent USB to RS-232 cable using an RS-232 DB9 update harness that we built based on the wiring diagrams in the installation manual. Here is the wiring diagram for updating either the AV20S or the AV20E. The update wiring is the same for both devices. For more details on wiring, please refer to the diagrams in the installation manual for your specific device. For the AV20S, the diagrams begin on page 13. For the AV20E, they begin on page 12. In these photos, you can also see the differences at each end of the harness. One clear difference is that the AV20N uses pin 9 for ground, while the Sabrent USB cable side uses pin 5. Once your AV20 is connected through the update harness and into a USB to RS-232 adapter like the one from Sabrent, simply connect the remaining USB end to your computer. Now that your AV20 is connected to your Windows computer, we'll walk through uploading the latest software to the device. First, click the drop-down next to port and select the serial COM port you see listed. Note that if no COM ports show, the Sabrent drivers may need to be reinstalled. One other thing to note is that COM3 is not an actual device and is only there to show that the Sabrent drivers were installed correctly you will most likely see another COM port available, such as COM7, for example, which should be your AV20. Next, click Connect. You should now see a green square in the top right of the program, just above Bootloader Heartbeat. If you don't see the green square, try selecting a different COM port, or double-check the connections between your AV20 and your computer. Once the connection status shows AV20 detected and the green Bootloader Heartbeat is active, Move to step 2. Here, select the update file specific to your AV20 model. Make sure the file name includes either AV20S or AV20E as highlighted on the screen now. Installing the wrong file will cause the unit to show an error every time you power up the unit. After selecting the correct file, go to step 3 and click Write Firmware. Allow a few minutes for the update to complete. When it's finished, you'll see Connection Status, Update Complete, as well as Update Complete listed in the activity log on the right. At this point, you're safe to disconnect your AV20 from your computer. If your AV20 displays the message, Calibration Error, Do Not Fly, verify that you are using the correct bin file for your device. The AV20S and the AV20E have different bin files used for this update. Please refer to the description of this video to find the correct one for your device. Here you can see our AV20S was successfully updated to software version 1.8. The first thing you will notice is that the AOA has an X through the label. It will stay this way until you reach 25 knots of airspeed. Using the right button, navigate through the pages until you reach the Setup menu. Press both the bottom left button and the right button simultaneously to enter the menu. Use the bottom left button to scroll down to Miscellaneous Options. 
press the right button to enter. Here, you can enable or disable pop-ups, like the AOA pop-up. Press both buttons from before to exit this page and scroll down to slip trim. Here, you can adjust until the ball is in the middle. Make sure that the plane is level when adjusting trims. Going out of this page, we can look at roll trim, as well as pitch trim. We want these values to match up as closely as possible. Next up is the hard calibration. Wait for it to finish, then enter the setup menu again and scroll to PITO 0. We will perform this as well. After completing the PITO 0, we can check the system info to make sure the software version is correct. And that's it! Your AV20 is now running the latest software. Have a safe flight!